water is a necessity of life. But as with other human conditions, it can also become threatening. Wherever people live, few societies are free from possible disasters. Whether on the land, in cities, in settlements, or quite uncertain, unsatisfactory and impermanent conditions, they can result from natural hazards, unplanned or uncaring human actions, or illness that kills a family and devastates society. People always lose something, someone or a piece of themselves, as disasters destroy investments, corrode societies and diminish environments on which people must depend. But most people generally think about disasters only after they happen. Wherever people live, they are always exposed to different types of risks. But just as their lives and livelihoods are being shaped by the physical places they inhabit, so too is their adaptability and resilience developed to address different threatening or dangerous conditions. Where people live also determines what kinds of disasters they need to be aware of. Just like other species, to survive, there's a need for humankind to adapt to their environments. All risk reduction is grounded in understanding the conditions in which people live and by using the skills and abilities of the people who work with those conditions. Southern Africa has many different human habitats. Rural agricultural areas that may be densely or sparsely populated, but always dependent on climatic conditions, land and water. Rural towns and markets have their own limitations. Pastoral landscapes pose other risks to the health of people and animals. There's the inescapable need for water, but also riches create their own problems for the land, but also for the society. People who live in or near forests have the benefit of abundant water and many other natural resources. But there can also be too much water and other threats too. Mountainous or steep, high altitude terrain are challenging environments in which to maintain a secure livelihood. Productive resources can be limited and infrastructure easily exposed to damage. The land itself can easily suffer from the elements, but there can equally be human-induced risks created by altered landscapes. Coastal, marine and island environments provide a wealth of natural resources, but they also come with a high level of potential risk of loss and damage to the people who live there. Nature threatens, but the mark of humankind remains. With the rapid and often uncontrolled growth of African cities, there's reason to be concerned with threats to peri-urban, former outlying areas of cities. Land and other natural resources can be threatened easily without planning. People are endangered without having basic services. Sickness also kills. So, who or what can protect all these human habitats and all of the people who live there? Reducing disaster risks involves everyone in a society. Even though at the time of a crisis or disaster, most people instinctively think of government authorities being responsible for everything. In reality, the most important work is done by many people, engaged in their daily activities of pursuing their professional responsibilities or conducting their practical abilities. Some indeed are government officials and other types of recognized local leaders. Financial departments and budget planners are equally important, but often overlooked. But besides administrators and politicians, there are many other key public officials who work in various government ministries and departments. These include the professional disciplines important for risk management in the environment and natural resources. The built environment and infrastructure requires many different skills and abilities of many people, including in construction companies at work, carpenters, electricians, masons, local home builders and housing planners. Transportation systems are critical elements for protecting from disaster risks. Through the efforts of people engaged in the construction, 
maintenance and management of roads, public transportation, railroads, airfields, ports and terminals, and all forms of storage and logistical operations. The storage of hazardous materials requires particular skills. Many of these activities involve people in both public enterprises as well as private sector commercial concerns. Reducing disaster risks involve people working in all forms of food processing and supply, whether industrial, on the farm or in local markets. Similarly, the provision of public utilities like electricity, water, communications, energy and fuel equally require people involved in reducing disaster risks. Manufacturing and commercial enterprises employ many people relevant to minimizing public exposure to risk. As all societies are driven by information, many people engaged in information technology and broadcast media and entertainment have important roles to play in communicating with the public and about their protection. All of these people in some manner are engaged in disaster risk education. But none are more so than teachers in our schools, whether at elementary levels in forming the next generation, or in advanced academic training, or in the development of important skills. This also includes parents and locally respected leaders. So there are very many and different people in all societies engaged in reducing disaster risks. In conclusion, we must also note the essential and highly skilled work of the dedicated men and women who respond at the time of need, assisting people when crises threaten and disasters occur. These emergency workers and disaster managers deserve praise and wide recognition for their courage, skills and abilities. But when the emergency workers are needed and serve with dedication, it is then too late for reducing disaster risks.